Today is September 19th, 2024, and this is William Michael, the headmaster of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. Recently, I've made a number of posts offering advice for parents and students in the academy, uh, explaining how I would recommend going about managing studies in the academy. Now, as I work directly with students subscribe to the premium student plan, this is how I will be managing their studies. And as my wife also works with students, she'll be following the same steps that I would like to show you in this tutorial video. For homeschooling parents, this is something that you could do on your own. If you learn to use these study plans and uh, put in a little bit of effort to learn what to do and then uh, stay somewhat consistent in doing it, uh, there's no reason why homeschooling parents can't do this themselves. And if homeschooling parents feel like they can't do it, not necessarily because they're, they're incapable, but just because they have other things to do and uh, don't have the time um, to work on these things, they can outsource this work to us through the premium student plan as one of the services that we offer to homeschooling families. But it's, it's something that's quite easy to understand, and so whether you're going to do it yourself or have us do it, I think it's good that you understand what we'll be doing and what we recommend. And in this video, I'd like to just walk you through uh, what it looks like, how it works, and what we'll be doing. So uh, you can either do it yourself or understand what we're going to do if we work with your children. Now this summer, I accomplished something quite significant in the development of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy in that I published complete study plans for grades K through 12, the entire K through 12 curriculum, broken down subject by subject all the way down to the task level. Uh, now for schools, this is very rare for any school to have study plans like this. Most schools don't have a curriculum that's broken down to such detail as ours is, but that's because they don't have a stable curriculum, whereas we do. So this summer I had time to work through the entire curriculum and I, I put together grade K through 12 study plans. And these plans are freely available on the Academy Study Center. They're not on the main website, uh, they're not made available to the public, but they're made available to anyone who has an enrollment subscription in the academy, or, or to make it simpler, anyone who has access to the study center. To find these study plans, if you go to the study center, and you can see I'm, I'm here at the study center, this should look familiar. You can see up here in the top right corner, I'm logged in as my daughter, Anna. Uh, so we're looking at Anna's account. And if you scroll down, on the study center page, scroll down, you'll come to the place where these study plans are. You can see them right here, K to 12 study plans. And you'll see that all 12 grades plus kindergarten uh, are available here through these links. So I've broken down the entire curriculum into grade level plans and th these grade level plans don't only include modern K-12 curriculum requirements, but they also include goals or recommended tasks for classical Catholic studies. So it's, it's, it's a, a complete curriculum, uh, something you can't find anywhere else today. And it's only accessible here, available for enrolled students, enrolled families. So what I'd like to do is just walk through um, how I would go about setting up a study plan for a student, and I'm going to use my daughter Anna as the example. So my daughter Anna is nine years old. She's a fourth grade student. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open up this grade four study plan. Open in a new tab here. And as I open this, you can see up top the label grade four CLAA Homeschool Study Plan. Now I've got to be careful here because you can see I'm signed in and I have some editing privileges that you won't have. So I don't want to confuse you. But 
When you open up this study plan, what you can do is make a copy of this for yourself. So go over to File, and then go down to Make a Copy. And when you hit Make a Copy, you can rename this. So for example, I'm just doing this at, um, by way of demonstration, but if I wanted to say Anna Michael, Grade 4, CLA Homeschool Study Plan. So I can retitle it because this is going to be my own. And I'm going to make a copy. So I'm just going to click Make a Copy. So I can get rid of this original here so there's no confusion. And we can look at this copy that I've made. And you can do this. Just go File, Make a Copy, and you can make your own copy of these study plans. And you saw that I just renamed it and added my daughter's name at the top of the study plan. This is a grade four study plan. So all of the courses and all of the tasks listed on this spreadsheet are recommended for a fourth grade student. Now, I've explained this a million times. These, these grade levels are artificial. We use them just to try to sort students into groups so we can provide them with an orderly um, progression through lessons across a number of different sections. We've got to organize the kids in some way. And these grade levels are just an initial way to begin organizing students. And they're usually based on the children's age. As I said, my daughter's nine years old. So we, we assume she's working at a fourth grade level. And in this demonstration, the first thing that I'm going to show you is how I would set this up and use this for a student who is ready to begin at this grade level. I know that many students come in and they may be an ahead in some subjects, behind in other subjects. That's fine. And what I'll do later on is, is show what's to be done in those circumstances. But to begin, let's just assume we're working with a student who is ready to hit the ground running in fourth grade. Um, which will be true for most students. Most students will need some customization, but, but for most of the subjects, they'll be okay to start in their ordinary grade level. But let's just assume that Anna here is ready to start with the grade four program. And as we look down here at the study plan and scroll to the right, we can just see all these courses laid out. We see a lot of blank columns, which with subjects that are not being studied at this grade level. And then we see columns that are filled with tasks, which are the, the subjects that we are studying in fourth grade. We can also see a division between columns that have a white background, which are modern curriculum subjects, and courses or subject areas that have a shaded background. Those are classical Catholic subject areas or, or studies. So there's, there's a number of different divisions in this spreadsheet. Lots and lots of information. Um, it may be intimidating at first just because there's so much stuff going on, but once you become familiar with what's actually on the study plan, um, you're going to find that even though it may look confusing, compared to the alternative, which is just to have courses and tasks and subjects flying around all over the place, this is infinitely more helpful. So it takes some time to get used to this, but once you do, uh, you'll be glad to have this available. So across the top here in, in row number two, you can see the subject areas are labeled. We see English language arts here in red. And as we scroll to the right, we see Latin in orange, mathematics in green, science in blue, humanities in gray, and the arts in light blue. And then as we continue, we see the trivium. As we get into classical studies, we see the trivium, the quadrivium, philosophy in blue, theology in purple. And that brings us to the end of the program. So the subject areas are labeled there in the second row and marked with different colors. Underneath that, underneath the subject areas, we see the actual courses that are being studied. So here you can see that under English Language Arts, we're studying Handwriting 4, English Reading 4, Elementary Grammar, English Spelling, and as we continue to the right, Elementary Literature 4. So five, five actual courses 
are being used to satisfy the requirements of English language arts, which we just refer to as English. So these would be the courses that need to be added on the study center. And remember, if you're enrolled in the student plan, all courses are included. So you don't need to worry about how many courses uh, a student needs. You don't need to purchase courses or pay any extra fees to add courses. It's already included in your subscription. So we see the courses listed here. And then underneath the course titles are all of the tasks that are required at this grade level for that course. So we can see for um, handwriting 4, we can see lessons 1 all the way down through 30 are going to be our objective to complete all of those lessons during this fourth grade year, to complete handwriting 4 from the beginning to the end. Then in English reading 4, which is a course intended for fourth grade, we're going to try to get that whole course done, but there are actually 90 lessons for that course. It's a literature course, reading stories and poems. Not that difficult, so don't be intimidated by the number of lessons. They're not necessarily um, difficult lessons. But we see 90 lessons for English Reading 4, and then we see Elementary Grammar. And notice here, in fourth grade, we'll pick up at Lesson 28 in Elementary Grammar. Now that assumes that this student has already started elementary grammar in third grade and has completed lessons 1 through 27 and is now picking up with lesson 28 in fourth grade. Same thing with spelling. When we see lesson 73 here, we're assuming that this student has already been studying the English spelling course in the academy and is moving on in fourth grade to lesson 73. We see in elementary literature, we're starting from lesson one. We see in Latin, we're picking up in Latin vocabulary, lesson 21. We see in mathematics, modern arithmetic two, picking up with lesson 37. And go on, you can, you can look at that yourself and, and, and see where these courses pick up in fourth grade, but that's what's going on here at the beginning of these task lists. Now. What we're going to do as a student gets started, and remember, we're assuming here that this student is ready to hit the ground running in fourth grade. We're going to mark the student's current lesson uh, by highlighting that cell with bright green. That means that this is the current lesson that the student is working on. So let's just take a minute and work across here, and we'll highlight these first lessons in green. And remember, this is assuming that this student is ready to get started at the normal recommended tasks for fourth grade. So you can see how we would do that. We would just go across and highlight the current lesson with this bright green. That tells the student that this is what you should be working on this week. And we'll just continue this all the way across highlighting the current tasks, the first tasks, with this bright green color. And I'll just finish this up. Two more. Give it bright green and bright green. So now we've identified all of the tasks to get started that are the present tasks for this student. And the student is going to get to work and work to complete those tasks as quickly as possible. Many parents ask me, you know, what's the pace at which a student should work? How long does it take for a student to get a lesson done? And I explain to parents, there's no answer to that question. It depends entirely on how well the student works. Some students can get multiple lessons done per week. Some students, if they work slowly or if the homeschool schedule is chaotic and inconsistent, they, they may take three weeks to get one task done. This is something for us to work for. We have to work to establish a, a, a calm, consistent, orderly homeschool schedule so that we can make consistent progress. So the answer to that question is really up to the homeschool family. The question is not at what pace do students move through these lessons, but at what pace are you as the homeschool family going to be able to move through these lessons. That's the whole challenge. 
But the, but the simple answer is, look, you need to establish a, a, a good homeschool schedule and work as hard as you can to make as much progress as possible. And so we would, we would set these green tasks as the, the goal for the first week. And then after a week, we will review the study plan. So we'll take a look and say, how did Anna do in week one? Did she get the first lesson of handwriting done or is she still working on it? And we find out that she did really well and she got lesson one and two both finished. So what I would do then is highlight those lessons and change the shading color to a gray and then move the green down to her current lesson. So we can see she's making progress. These gray boxes are completed lessons and the green box is the lesson she's currently working on. So she's going to focus on that green box this week in handwriting. When we go over to English reading, we find the same thing. She did well. She got this first lesson done. So we're going to mark that with a, with a gray color and move that green down to the next task to show her current status. However, in elementary grammar, she didn't get as much done. She actually didn't finish this lesson. So what, what I'm going to do, since she has to work on this for another week, I'm going to change this from green to orange. So we can see a couple different results, or a few different results. We can see a number of lessons completed with the current lesson moving down um, to lesson three. We see one lesson getting completed and the current lesson moving down to lesson two. And then we see another course where less progress was made. The lesson that was assigned was not finished. And rather than highlight it with green, which means it's current, we highlight it with orange to show that the student is making slow progress in this subject. When we mark it in orange, it signals that this subject needs to be given attention. Because the student's goal is to keep all of the subjects green and not to have any orange tasks in their list. So we could go on to spelling and say the student did well, got this lesson done this week. We can move that green bar down to the next task and so on for the rest of the subjects. Now the student is ready for another week of study. The student can see or Anna can see that in handwriting her goal is to complete lesson three. In English reading her goal is to complete lesson two. In elementary grammar, she's got to make sure she gets that lesson 28 finished because she's already uh, been working on it for a week. And then in spelling, she's moving on to lesson 74. So now let's say another week goes by. The student puts in another week of work and she does the same thing in handwriting. She gets two lessons done. So we're going to highlight those two lessons, gray them out, and move that green box down to her next and present lesson, down to lesson five. In English reading, she didn't get quite as much done. She actually didn't finish this lesson, so we're going to turn that orange. And unfortunately, she's still working on lesson 28 in elementary grammar, so now we're going to turn this red because this has been incomplete for more than two weeks. So we're going to turn this red, and this red task is now her number one priority for the upcoming week. She has to get this lesson complete. And a parent can decide to have the student work on nothing else but this one lesson until it's finished. And if she finishes it next week, it'll turn her next lesson to green. So the goal is to keep everything green on the study plan week by week, to focus on anything that turns orange, meaning that it's been worked on for more than a week, and then make an absolute priority out of anything that becomes red. That's an urgent, necessary task that's got to be taken care of immediately before anything else. So this week, Anna is going to really focus on this elementary grammar lesson because she can't let another week go by where she doesn't make progress. And in spelling, we'll say that she got Lesson 74 finished and is moving on to Lesson 75. One more week goes by. Anna's doing fine again in handwriting. She gets another lesson finished and she moves on to Lesson 6. 
She finishes that lesson two, so that turns gray, and then lesson three turns green. So now she's current again, working in green. And thanks be to God, lesson 28 finally got finished, so that's going to be grayed out as completed, and she moves on to lesson 29, and that's now green. In English spelling, she completed a lesson there, so we'll gray that out and turn the next lesson green. And so that's how we would work through the study plans week by week, uh, through the year, through all of the subjects. We're only looking at four of the courses here, but we would do this for all of the subjects going across. Now, it's obvious that some students like language arts, some students like math, some like history, some like religion, some like their Latin studies, and so there will be a variety of of levels of progress in different subject areas for different students. And as long as we're moving through the program over the course of the year, everything's fine. The goal is just to continue to make progress, to keep everything moving forward. It's okay if some courses get ahead. It's okay if, if some fall behind a little bit, as long as we keep working on them. Because we've got a 36-week school schedule each year. But it's okay if we continue studying. As homeschool students, really, we don't have a 36-week schedule. We've got a 52-week schedule. So we've got more time to continue working. And our goal is to get all of the grade-level tasks completed for that grade level during that year, as much time as it takes. So that's how these study plans work, and they allow parents and students to just focus on present tasks, which is really important. Think about when Jesus tells us, take no thought for tomorrow, but only take thought for the, the present day's troubles. And we, we hear that and we say, well, how can I do that? How can I take no thought for tomorrow if I've got to figure out what to do and plan and organize and, and try to watch to see what's going on so I don't make any bad? How can I just focus on today and take no thought for tomorrow. Well, the assumption, I would argue, in that teaching is that we've got to know what to do and then just focus day by day on doing it. In the Christian life, we already know what to do. We've got to simply keep God's commandments. And Jesus teaches us to take no thought for tomorrow, just be obedient today. We can do that because God has revealed his commandments to us and told us what to do. But in other areas of life, like education, we're responsible for this planning and decision making and so on. And we've got to know what to do in the same way. We've got to know what to do so that we can focus on the troubles of the present day and take no thought for tomorrow. These study plans allow us to do that. Before, before this summer, we could never do this in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. And I, I really don't think many homeschool parents can do something like this. There are obviously other programs with lesson plans and syllabi and things like that, but they're not taking into consideration all of modern study requirements and classical Catholic studies. It's easy to just ignore classical Catholic studies or to make them very shallow and overly simple and then to focus the kids on minimum standards in modern subjects. But if we want to aim higher than that, if we want to exceed modern requirements, get all of the grade level standards taken care of, but also add classical Catholic studies to our children's education, We've got to have a plan that lays that all out for us. And these study plans do just that. And they allow, as I said, they allow parents and students to just focus on the, the green tasks, focus on the present tasks, and get them done week by week. It also prevents students from falling behind in any subject areas because we see that go from green to orange to red and then we make it the ultimate priority until we get that thing moving. So we keep all subject areas moving forward and we don't fall into that trap of just focusing on the subjects we like 
and ignoring other necessary subjects. So that's how this planner works. And as I said, for a student getting started who's ready to just hit the ground running in a grade level, everything is simple. But, and I'd like to just make some corrections to this and bear with me as I get a little crazy here, just one second. I'm just gonna back up and undo everything that I had done. Okay, so this is back to a clean sheet. Let's, let's take a more complicated situation. Let's say we've got a student who is nine years old and is ready for fourth grade, but this student didn't do the previous lessons in elementary grammar. What are we going to do then? So we can't just pick up at lesson 28 because this student didn't do lessons 1 to 27. Maybe she only did the first nine lessons. So what are we going to do? We're just going to add those lessons in here. So we're going to take the fourth grade plan for Anna, but we're going to say she's got to finish the first 27 lessons. So what I'm going to do is just insert cells and shift the cells down to just slide everything down. You can see that that first lesson has just been moved down and we've opened up a cell. Now I'm going to use a shortcut to do this. And we'll just get a bunch of them in here. But we would insert 27 spaces here. Sorry about that. Bear with me as I just fumble through this. Just a second. And we would simply pull those lessons from the previous grade, and I'll just do a few of them here. Let's say she left off somewhere like lesson 20. So let's say in her previous year, she didn't finish everything. She left off at 19, so we're going to pick up at lesson 20. So we're going to add lessons 20 and 21. We'll just drag this down, delete this. And what we're going to do, because these are left over from the previous year, we're going to add them to the current year, but we're going to make them all orange. So we can see that these tasks here are a priority. We've got to try to get these done because these are old lingering tasks that need to get taken care of. So that's all we would do. If a student is coming into a grade level where there's still some work to be done from a previous grade level, we're just going to add it to the beginning of the course, normally. Now there are some subjects where we're not going to do that. In grammar, it's important because the lessons in grammar build on previous lessons. But there are other courses that don't do that. For example, spelling. In English spelling, we're learning lists of spelling words that focus on particular concepts in spelling. So in order to study Lesson 73, you don't necessarily need to have completed Lessons 1 through 72. You might want to, but it's not necessary. So there's no problem starting with Lesson 73, even if the student hasn't completed Lessons 1 through 72. In elementary literature, if the student didn't complete Literature 3, it's okay we can pick up with Lesson 1 in Literature 4 because the courses really don't build on each other. Uh, they're not like grammar or some, some, some art or science that's, that's very strictly progressive. Uh, so the courses are different. Latin vocabulary, you can pick up at Lesson 21 even though you didn't do Lessons 1 through 20 uh, because the lessons are just standalone lessons that cover individual uh, topics. Mathematics, of course, is more progressive. So if a student hadn't completed the first lessons, we would need to add those for arithmetic. Science would not need any, um, any, any return to previous lessons. World chronology, we're starting with lesson one, so that's not a problem. And the same is true for classical studies. Aesop's fables, because we're just reading through the fables and they don't build on each other. They're all just separate fables. A student can start at Lesson 109, and it's no problem. Um, Catholic Bible 1 is a course where 
Um, you could just pick up and start with Lesson 88, but if you've never had the child read the Bible or study the Bible before, you might want to start back at Lesson 1 and not pay strict attention to the grade level um, progress where, where fourth graders are picking up. And then catechism, um, again, that's going to depend on what a student has been able to do in the past. Um, and then the lives of the saints, students can pick up anywhere in this course, so there'd be no reason to add anything, even if a student was just getting started. So what I, what I wanted to show you there was that if a student is getting started and they're just ready to run in fourth grade, everything is prepared. They're just going to make these first tasks green, or you're going to do this as the parent, or we're going to do this if we're working with the children. I'm going to get rid of these lessons here. Since we already explained what they're for, we don't need to worry about that anymore. We're just going to make these first lessons green and get to work if we're ready. If the student's not ready yet and has some uh, previous year work to catch up on, or isn't ready to jump into one of these courses in the middle of the course, then we have to make some adjustments. Now what I recommend, again, as a homeschooling parent, you are the administrator of your child's schooling. You are the, the ultimate authority in your child's education. You're free to do with your children whatever you want. You can use these study plans as a template to get started and make whatever customizations and additions you'd like, but that's your business. Um, now, I, I don't recommend that because I think that most parents, especially if they're dealing with multiple children, are going to get in over their head and run into trouble. When we're working with families, we'll take care, we'll take care of all of this customization for the parents and get everything set up during our first meetings so the kids can understand exactly where they're at and we can start tracking their progress and trying to keep them accountable to move forward in all subject areas. Uh, we'll be working through all of that customization. And what's important is we can help to make decisions based on our knowledge of the curriculum and you know what's, what courses can be started at grade level, what courses do require students to go back and make things up, what courses can be started uh, ahead if students have already completed these lessons and what courses can't do that. So there are a lot of things to consider, and I, I do think that it's, it, w it would be smart for parents to say, you know what we're going to do to get started? We're going to set up a consultation meeting, and we're going to let Mr. Michael set up the study plan and work all these things out, um, and then get started, and then we can take it from there. You know, that might be a good plan. Or for premium students to just say, we're going to schedule a meeting time with Mr. Michael, get each of the kids' study plans uh, set up for the year, and then get rolling and have Mr. Michael or Mrs. Michael review the progress every week, update the study plan, uh, and so on. That, that's what the premium student plan is for. But homeschool parents can manage it on their own if they, if they see me go through this and, and say, oh yeah, I understand what's going on. I can do this. That's fine. Homeschool parents can do it. These study plans are all freely available on uh, the Study Center homepage. So that's how these study plans work. Um, the hard work was making all of the decisions with respect to the subject areas, the courses, and the, and the study materials to fulfill the requirements of these subject areas, determining how many tasks to include at each grade level, knowing where to divide courses, where to begin and end, things like that. Th those are all very complicated issues that I had to work through um, over the summer, which, which, to be fair, I've been working on those things for the past 20 plus years. But I've got all of that work done in these study plans, and that work now doesn't need to be done by parents. What I always tell parents is our goal is to allow parents to do the work that parents can do and handle the work that parents need teachers to do uh, on our side of things because when that relationship is working rightly, where the teachers are doing the, the academic work that requires experience and, and knowledge of, of the curriculum materials, um, 
it's good to have the teachers do that and not have parents trying to do that. It's just a waste of time and energy. And then have the parents focusing on the things that the parents can do. The parents control the children's homeschool environment. They control the schedule. They they motivate the kids they, with rewards and punishments. They, they act as parents to the children. Children need their parents to be parents. And, and when parents try to become teachers, often the kids begin to lose benefits that they really need to thrive. They need teachers to be teachers. They need parents to be parents. They can't lose one of them for the sake of the other. So when we work together, I think that we can give the kids the best of both worlds. And with these study plans and all of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy curriculum available to us in the study center, I think we've got everything that we need to help our children thrive in their studies. So that's how the study plans work. That's what I would like to share. For those students who are enrolled in the premium student plan, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be moving away from the planners that we had used in previous years to these study plans because it's going to be much more efficient for us to work through these courses. So that's what I wanted to share today. I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions about these things, please get in touch, but we'll be working on this moving forward and hopefully make it better and better over time. I'm always available to answer questions about these things, even if you're just curious, you know, why did you choose this book for this level, or why does fourth grade do this? I'm happy to answer those questions. Those questions need answers, and um, none of this is random. I can explain the what's and the why's uh, for all of these different issues in the curriculum and in these study plans. Feel free to ask those questions so you as a parent can have peace and know why things are the way they are. I think you have a right to have that information. So if you have any questions, get in touch. I hope that's helpful. You can rewatch this video, make a list of questions, send them along, and I'll make sure to answer every one of them. Hope that's helpful. God bless.